Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast number 548, Hashimoto's disease, the what, why, and how. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Now, if you've never heard about Hashimoto's disease, I'm sure you've heard about autoimmune thyroid disease or just hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is a huge category of low thyroid, and Hashimoto's disease is one of the autoimmune diseases that attacks the thyroid. One of our um, listeners asked us to discuss Hashimoto's disease instead of just plain old thyroid disease and talk about the differences in Hashimoto's disease and other thyroid diseases. So we're doing, we're doing what she has asked us. Um, I do see Hashimoto's disease very often after it has already been diagnosed and treated. Off, sometimes we treat it and, and as well as diagnose it, but in, in the end, it usually is somebody who has already been seen by a doctor and has been um, going to the doctor for different symptoms, which I'm going to list, uh, that made him think, hmm, this might be an autoimmune thyroid disease. And so he or she, the doctor, has then done a test to find out if it was Hashimoto's or a different kind of thyroid disease. So Hashimoto's is a special kind of autoimmune disease. It is an autoimmune disease that where your own body attacks part of the thyroid gland, and that is the uh, thyroid peroxidase an antibody attacks your thyroid peroxidase. Thyroid peroxidase is an enzyme, and it's an enzyme that helps make your thyroid hormone. So if it gets attacked and you can't make thyroid hormone, then you have hypothyroidism. So it basically kills your thyroid and the thyroid slowly stops working. So this is one of the things that we look for when someone comes in and says, I've gained weight, my hair's falling out, I have constipation, I have, um, when you test their, blood, uh, their temperature, they have low temperature. When you test their blood pressure, they have low blood pressure and a low pulse, usually. They have high cholesterol, brittle nails, and an enlarged thyroid right here, kind of right above your, above your collarbone, uh, an enlarged tongue, uh, sometimes a new snoring. They have fatigue, muscle pain, joint stiffness, depression, memory problems, abnormal menstrual cycles, if they're still cycling, generalized swelling, like just being swollen all the time, um, a hoarse voice, and trouble swallowing. All of those things, or some of them, can be the co complaints. That's what doctors say when... Um, as a word for why did you go to the doctor? The complaints of blank. So the complaints of hoarseness, the complaints of weight gain. Those are how we describe what patients come to us uh, to have fixed. So when we, when we see these series of symptoms or a group of these symptoms, we go, oh, well, that's probably thi low thyroid, but could it just be low thyroid from low iodine, low thyroid because um, there was trauma to the thyroid? Is it low thyroid because they have an autoimmune disease? And then we start doing testing to determine what kind of thyroid disease it is. Hashimoto's is uh, an autoimmune disease, which, which we believe and we are not sure is caused by a bacteria or a viral infection that a patient has. And the patient has antibodies from its thymus gland go to attack that virus or bacteria, but it gets confused and it attacks the thyroid gland and a specific part of the thyroid gland, which is the enzyme thyroid peroxidase. So we think it starts as an infection. It could start as something else. Sometimes radiation um, for Hodgkin's lymphoma can, uh, can actually trigger Hashimoto's disease or other thyroid diseases. But everyone agrees that people who have Hashimoto's 
disease have a, a general genetic weakness that makes them more susceptible to it than other people. In other words, the person that gets Hashimoto's has some kind of genetic makeup that makes them more likely to get it under the same circumstances as somebody else who does not have that genetic weakness and that other person doesn't get it. So it, let's just say it's a confused immune system that attacks somebody, it's triggered by some kind of trauma or infection, and it attacks a part of the thyroid, which is the thyroid peroxidase, which makes your thyroid hormone. So what happens when um, a person is untreated? What happens down the line if you have Hashimoto's and you are not treated? You just go, oh, well, I'm just going to feel terrible, and you just suck it up and don't go to the doctor and you don't get diagnosed and treated. So some of the long uh, chronic illnesses that can occur if you don't treat your Hashimoto's is that you can have a, a cardiomyopathy, which is a uh, failure of your heart to pump well. It's actually a type of, uh, can be caused by a virus, but it can be caused by an autoimmune uh, reaction. But it, so your heart can be attacked and it can be life-threatening. Um, it can cause depression. It can change your, uh, your neurotransmitters and make you less likely to be happy and make you feel depressed and anxious. It can also cause you to have low libido and have poor sexual functioning. If you're too tired or you don't feel well, usually you don't have good sexual functioning, but there are other factors in play here. And then there's also the, the uh, condition called myxedema, where your thyroid um, fails. You become swollen, bloated, it can actually uh, cause you to be uh, to die. So it's a severe failure of your thyroid, and that can be one of the long-term side effects or uh, consequences of Hashimoto's disease. So it's important that you have it diagnosed and treated. What tests do we do to, to diagnose and treat Hashimoto's? Well, the first test is a test for hypothyroidism. We test a TSH, a thyroid-stimulating hormone, which comes from your pituitary gland, to tell your thyroid to make more thyroid. We test to see if it is elevated. If it's elevated, it's trying to make your thyroid make more thyroid hormone. We look at your free or active portion of your T4 and your T3 thyroid hormones. If those are low and the TSH is high, you have some kind of hypothyroidism or low thyroid. So that confirms the condition of your thyroid, but not the cause of why you have low thyroid. When we uh, want to look at a specific test for Hashimoto's, we do a TPO, thyroid peroxidase, antibody test, a test for an antibody from your body that attacks the uh, thyroid peroxidase enzyme. Um, when we find this to be elevated, then that is how we diagnose for sure that you have an autoimmune thyroid disease. It does not necessarily change the fact that you are low on thyroid. It just gives us the reason you're low on thyroid. So we measure TPO antibodies initially, and then we measure them frequently throughout the beginning of treatment, and then we stretch out the time frame in between checking your TPO antibodies. If they continue to go up, then we have not treated your thyroid appropriately, or we need to treat it more, or if it, it is obviously getting worse. Um, generally, TPO antibodies don't go away, but they can get better when, uh, TP, when, excuse me, when Hashimoto's is treated. So what's the treatment for Hashimoto's? Well, interestingly enough, it's treated just like we treat hypothyroidism. We use uh, a type of thyroid replacement, and I choose, let me regress. Hashimoto's is much more common in women than men. I haven't had a man with Hashimoto's that I can remember, um, but because women are more common, commonly the victim of Hashimoto's, I usually use Armour Thyroid or Nature Thyroid to treat them. Women seem to get better faster or better more completely from their symptoms and from hypothyroidism on armor thyroid, which is essentially pig thyroid. It has been, we've used this since the 30s. It is a very, very effective thyroid treatment, and it has to be titrated slowly up to the right dose. So we follow blood work. We sometimes follow 
if the blood work isn't as reliable for you, we sometimes follow your symptoms as well as your basal body temperature to see if it's actually going up as we improve the function of your thyroid. So uh, for men, if, if men with hypothyroidism, I give them Synthroid or Levothyroxine. That's very effective for men. Um, I can't tell you the reason that that is. I can just tell you that 30 years of experience says that women do better on this than men do, do better on armor thyroid than men do, and men do better on Synthroid. So um, th there's a couple of catches to thyroid and giving thyroid. One is you don't want to over overdose on thyroid because that can make your heart skip beats and actually go very fast. It can make your temperature rise and make you sweat more profusely or profusely. So it, those are not comfortable symptoms. It's better to have your thyroid normal, not low or high. So um, we have to do three things when we're treating any kind of thyroid disease. We have to make sure that you're on the right thyroid hormone, that your body actually absorbs the thyroid hormone, which entails you taking it the proper way and making sure that you're not on drugs that counteract it or that you, that you don't have a gut problem, which makes it impossible for you to absorb it into your small intestine and actually use your thyroid hormone that you're taking as a pill. The last thing is we have to make sure that your cells that are accepting the thyroid hormone, which is nearly every cell in your body, has enough iodine to accept that hormone that you are taking as a pill. So we have to give you the right thing. We have to make sure it goes into your body, in through your intestines and your stomach properly. And we have to make sure that your cells are actually absorbing it. It's a very complex process, more than uh, 20 steps in the GI, uh, in the GI uh, tract to actually get the thyroid in through your body, to your bloodstream, to the cells that you need it where you need it. So the first thing that I would tell you is if you're taking thyroid hormone for any reason, but for Hashimoto's, is that you should always take it on an empty stomach first thing in the morning without any other pills, with no coffee, with no nothing but water, and wait 20 minutes before you do anything else that has to do with oral consumption. No other coffee, water, drink, I mean water's fine, but no other drinks and no other food. So once you get that taken care of, we know you've done your job, you've taken your pill at the right time, and it has a chance of being absorbed. The biggest problem we have with absorption from your stomach is that either you don't have enough stomach acid, just genetically you don't have enough stomach acid, and that is typically in people who have um, difficulty eating meat. They can't, they can't get the meat to break down so it makes them feel bad. So if you have trouble eating meat, then you should take, and you need to take your thyroid hormone, then you should take digestive enzymes with your thyroid hormone that will help you at, get enough acid in your stomach to break down the thy your thyroid. It also helps the breakdown in the rest of your GI tract. So that's the very first thing you have to think about. If you're one of those people, you'll need a uh, digestive enzymes to take with your thyroid so that you can absorb it. Another thing is if you take um, acid blockers of any kind, even Pepsid or some of the, um, uh, the proton pump um, uh, blockers so that you can get rid of the acid from your stomach, you can actually be blocking the absorption of both nutrients and your thyroid and your food. So it's important to try to take those in short bursts and not take those chronically because it's decreasing your ability to get the nutrition you need, but also to get the thyroid that I'm prescribing you. If you have um, irritable bowel or uh, Crohn's disease or colitis or any other form of bowel problem, it's very possible that you do not have the right bacteria in your intestines that help you absorb anything from your food um, to your medicines. So it's important that you take probiotics. And this is not something you can get from your food. This is something you have to repopulate your gut with the right, with the right um, bacteria to break down your food and so that you can absorb nutrients, but also your medicine. So probiotics are a good thing to take 
in the morning, not with your thyroid, but with your uh, first meal, and take them every day, and that will repopulate your intestines so that you can actually absorb nutrients from them. Otherwise, it goes right through. Same with thyroid, uh, thyroid uh, pills. If there is a problem with your saliva, and I'm going to go backwards up the GI tract for a second. You know, some people don't make a lot of saliva. They have dry mouths. If that's the case, then treatment for dry mouth is good, is important. But also drinking some water and chewing your thyroid, even, even though it tastes like chalk, chew it and drink it and take a, a large glass of water with it so that you can actually get it to break down because every part of your GI tract breaks down food and this medicine a little bit more as it goes. So having good saliva is really important. If you don't have it, this is what you have to do to actually get this medicine, it's not bitter, into your, into your uh, system. So once you get it into your system, it's gotten past your stomach, your mouth, your uh, intestines, and now it's in your bloodstream. Then it has to literally hook up to a cell and penetrate that cell. So it needs to get to the cell through your bloodstream, which isn't that difficult, and it needs to be attracted to and accepted by a receptor site on your cells. So it's not just how much thyroid you have in your blood, but are your cells receiving? Do they have the nutrients they need to receive your thyroid? And the nutrient that's most important is iodine. Your thyroid is actually made of iodine, but in, in the case of taking your uh, thyroid, you already have iodine in that armor thyroid. It's in the, the hormone. So as you take it, you don't need more iodine to actually make thyroid, but you need iodine on the end point, on the receiving end. It has to have, you have to have enough iodine in your blood to make the cell wall of your cells appropriate and, and actually actively absorb the, the uh, thyroid with the iodine. So if you uh, live in the Midwest, then I can say for sure you don't have enough iodine because it's not in the Midwest. It, we're in the goiter belt. We, we have more people with goiters, large, large thyroids, which can be Hashimoto's, can be any other type of low thyroid. It can even be large when you have a hyperthyroid, but that's not as common. But we live in the Midwest, and the Midwest doesn't have iodine in our water. It doesn't have iodine in our ground. If you eat locally, if you grow your own food, you're not getting iodine from anything. If you live closer to the coastline or in areas where an ocean has, uh, has been over the land in the last millions of years, then you likely will have iodine in your water and iodine in your ground. Now, if you have fluoride in your water, then iodine is negated. So you may, if you have fluoride, fluorinated water, you will probably have to take iodine. If you drink bottled water all the time, there's no iodine in that. There's nothing in bottled water. So you need to actually take iodine to balance that out and give your body enough iodine. It's an essential nutrient, and it needs to be taken for you to use your thyroid at the receiving end, at the cellular end. It's really very important. You can't forget all the different steps to getting that one little pill into your body and avoiding all of the roadblocks that medicines or lack of enzymes or lack of uh, GI bacteria can, um, can put in front of you so that you won't get enough of your thyroid. When, um, when I want to see if somebody's really absorbing their thyroid and they have had, say, a low body temperature, less than 98, I usually have them test their uh, basal body temperature oral thermometer, just after they awaken in the morning, before they get out of bed, before they go to the bathroom, take their temperature. If their temperature isn't 98, if it's below 98, they likely, not always, but likely, still don't have enough thyroid. I also look at symptoms. Are your symptoms gone? Is your hair starting to grow? Are your eyebrows starting to fill in? Uh, is your skin not as dry? Are you starting to lose some weight? Are you less swollen than you had been uh, a month ago. So I look at all the symptoms. I ask my patients to, to do a checkoff list and see if their th low thyroid symptoms are better because the pa my patients are my best 
are my best test. I also look at the lab work. I'd like to see the TSH come down below 1, and I'd like to see your T4 and T3, T4 above 1 and your T3 above 3. So in those, those are my parameters for judging whether somebody's treatment is working. Uh, the TPO antibodies, I'd like to see them stop rising or even fall somewhat. I don't expect them to go away. I just expect them not to get higher. So with proper treatment, iodine, taking your thyroid as you should, Hashimoto's should be something that you can manage and you can live with. Uh, just as many people have to live with hypothyroidism for lots of other reasons, the only, other, the only nuance here is that you have to look out for other autoimmune diseases because once you've had one, you're more likely to have another. So this is my summary of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And if you would like to read it, we'll have a blog uh, on my website, biobalancehealth.com. And, <clears throat> and this is available on my website as well. So thank you for joining us today. Please see us next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.